Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is reading the Old Testament chronologically in 111 days. We're on day 66, and today we'll be reading uh, Ecclesiastes. I'll be reading Kings, Second Chronicles, and Proverbs. So, a uh, mixed bag today. Let's get started here in Ecclesiastes 9, verse 1. For all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God, and no man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. All things come alike to all there is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean and to the unclean, and to him that sacrificeth, to him that sacrificeth not. As is the good, so is the sinner, and he that soareth, as he that feareth an oath. This is an evil th this is an, e an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all, yet also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that they go to the dead. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love, their hatred, their envy is not perished, neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is under the sun, that is done under the sun. Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart for God. Now accepteth thy works. Let thy garments always be white, and let thy head lack no ointment. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of thy life, of thy vanity, which he hath given thee unto the Son all the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life, and thy labor which thou takest unto the Son. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. That's a pretty good one. And, you know, it's it's not the only verse in the Bible that talks about this. And the, and there's other verses in the Bible that says everything you do, you do for the Lord. And then everything you do for the Lord is not in vain. So very great verses to remember. That everything we do should be for the Lord and nothing we do is in vain. It's ever in vain for the Lord. I returned and saw unto the sun that the race is not to the swift nor to the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. For man also knoweth not his time, as the fishes that are taken in evil net, as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of the men snared in evil time, when it falleth suddenly upon them. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. There was a little sea and few men within it, and there came a great king against it, and besieged it, and built great bulwarks against it. Now there was found in a poor wise man, and here he by his wisdom delivered the city, yet no man remembered that same poor man. Then I said, Wisdom is better than strength, nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. The words of the wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. Ecclesiastes 10 Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savour, so doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honour. A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart is at his left. Yea, also when he that is a fool walketh by the way, his wisdom faileth him, and he saith to everyone that he is a fool. If the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee, leave not thy place, for yielding pacifieth great offences. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, as an error which proceeds from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in a low place. I have seen servants upon horses, and princes walking as servants upon the earth. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whoso breaketh a hedge, the serpent shall bite him. Whoso removeth stone shall be hurt therewith, and he that cleaveth wood shall be endangered thereby. If the iron be blunt, and he do not wet the edge, then he must put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Surely the servant will bite without enchantment, and a babbler is no better. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talk is mischievous madness. A fool also is full of words that man cannot tell what shall be, and what shall be after him. Who can tell him? The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them, because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child, and thy princes eat in the morning. Blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles, and thy princes eat in due season, for strength and not for drunkenness. By much slothfulness the building decayeth, through idleness of the hands of the house droppeth through 
A feast is made for laughter, and wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. Curse not the king, no, not in thy thought, and curse not the rich in the bedchamber, for a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which hath wings shall tell the matter. Ecclesiastes 11 Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven, and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth, and if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is in the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all things. In the morning sow thy seed, in the evening withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whether it shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both be alike good. Truly the light is sweet and pleasant thing, it is for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember all days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. Rejoice, O man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the day of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Ecclesiastes 12 Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them, while the sun, or the light, or the moon, or the stars not uh, be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease, because they are few, and those that look out to the windows be darkened. And the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and, at the, and all the daughters of the music shall be brought low. Also when they shall be afraid that of that which is high, fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and the desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, all is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed, and sought out, and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goads, and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies which are given from one shepherd. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end, and much study and weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of a man. Yeah, pretty much, you know, fearing God, that means, you know, to have reverence and respect for Almighty God. That's always important. Uh, and keeping his commandments, you know. Uh, we need to keep his commandments it's not that um it's not like we're bound by them you know it's not like we're under the law today but we still need to do what's right the ten commandments are a great example of you know living for the lord so for god shall bring every work into judgment and with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil moving on to first kings chapter 10 and when the queen of Sheba heard the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, with camels that bear spices, very much gold, precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom in the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and his accent, by, ascent by which he went up to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and thy wisdom. Howbeit I believe not the words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. Happier are thy men, happier are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighteth in thee, to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever. Therefore made he thee king to do judgment and justice. And she gave the king a hundred and twenty talents of gold, and of spices very great store, and precious stones. There came no more such abundance of spices as these, which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. 
And the navy also of Haram that brought gold from Ophir brought in from Ophir great plenty of almond trees and precious stones. And the king made of the almond trees pillars for the house of the Lord and for the king's house, harps and salt trees for singers. And there came no such almond trees, nor were seen unto this day. And King Solomon gave unto the queen of Sheba all her desire, whatsoever he, she asked, beside that which Solomon gave her of his royal bounty. So she turned and went her went to her own country, she and her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred threescore and six talents of gold. You know, this is an interesting number. Six hundred, right? Three score, a score is twenty, so twenty, forty, sixty, and six. So six 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 isn't that interesting um don't know if it means anything it's just a very interesting number that that pops up here and it has to do with gold it has to do with you know currency of some sort very interesting that that pops up um so it's, it'd be something to to look into and to dig deep deeper into but very interesting number Beside that, he had the, the merchantmen and of all the traffic of the spice merchants and of all the kings of Arabia and of the governors of the country. And King Solomon made 200 targets of beaten gold. 600 shekels of gold went to one target, and he made 300 shields of beaten gold. Three pound of gold went to one shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with the best gold. The throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round behind, and there were stays on either side of the place of the seat, and two lions stood beside the stays. And twelve lions stood there on the one side and there on the other side upon the six steps. There was not the like made in any kingdom. And all Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. It was nothing accounted in the days of Solomon. For the king had at sea a navy of Tharshish with the navy of Haram. Once in three years came the navy of Tharshish, bringing gold and silver and ivory and apes and peacocks. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom, and all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. And they brought every man his present, vessels of silver, vessels of gold, and garments, and armor, and spices, horses, and mules, a rate year by year. And Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen. He had a thousand and four hundred chariots, twelve thousand horsemen, whom he bestowed in the cities of chariots, and with the king at Jerusalem. And the king made silver to be in Jerusalem, as stones and cedars made he to be, as the sycamore trees that are in the vale, for abundance. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt, and linen yarn, and king's mer the king's merchants received the linen yarn at a price. And a chariot came up and went out of Egypt for six hundred shekels of silver, and a horse for a hundred and fifty. And so for all the kings of the Hittites, the kings of Syria, did they bring them out by their means. First Kings 11. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in unto them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn you away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build a high place for Cheshmash, the abomination of Moab, and the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he... For all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and he had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said to Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and I will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding that in thy days I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit I will not rend away all the kingdom, but I will give one tribe to thy son David for my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon, Hadad the Edomite, he was of the king's seed in Edom. For it came to pass, when David was in Edom, and Joab the captain of the host was gone up to bury the slain after he had smitten every male in Edom. 
For six months did Joab remain there with all Israel, and he had cut off every male in Edom. That Hadad fled and certain Edomites of his father's servants with him to go into Egypt, Hadad being a, yet a little child. And they rose out of Midian and came out to Paran, and they took men with them out of Paran, and they came to Egypt under Pharaoh, king of Egypt, which gave him a house, and appointed him big jewels, and gave him land. And Hadad found a great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him to wife the sister of his own wife, the sister of Tafenis, the queen. And the sister of Tafenis bare him Genubath, his son, who Tafenis weaned in Pharaoh's house. And Genubath was in Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh. And when Hadad heard in Egypt that David slept with his fathers, and that Joab, the captain of the host, was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me depart, that I may go to my own country. Then Pharaoh said unto him, But what hast thou lacked with me? And behold, thou seekest to go to not to thine Go to thine own country? And he answered, Nothing, howbeit let me go in any wise. And God stirred him up another adversary, Rezon, the son of Elidah, which fled from his lord Hadadezer, king of Zobah. And he gathered men unto him, and became captain over a band. Then when David slew them of Zobah, and they went to Damascus, and dwelt there, and, and reigned in Damascus. He was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon, beside the mischief that Hadad did, and he abhorred Israel, and reigned over Syria. And Jeroboam the son of Nebet, an Ephrathite of Zerada, Solomon's servant, whose mother name was Zerah, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hand against the king. And this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breach of the city of David his father. And the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor, and Solomon seeing the young man that he was industrious, he made him rule over all the charge of the house of Joseph. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ijah, for the Shilonite, found him in the way, and he had clad himself with a new garment, and they too were alone in the field. And Ijah caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in twelve pieces. He said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord the God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and I will give ten tribes to thee. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because that they have forsaken me and have worshipped Astaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in mine eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. Howbeit I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life for David my servant's sake, whom I choose, because he kept my commandments and my statutes. I will take the kingdom out of his son, his son's hand, and will give it unto thee even ten tribes. And unto his son will I give one tribe, that David my servant may have a light always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. And I will take thee, and thou shalt reign according to all that thy soul desireth, and shalt be king over Israel. And it shall be, if thou wilt hearken to all that I command thee, and wilt walk in my ways, and do that which is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as David my servant did, I will be with thee, and build thee a sure house, as I built for David, and will give Israel unto thee. And I will for this afflict the seed of David, but not forever. Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam, and Jeroboam arose and fled to Egypt unto Shishak king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. And the rest of the Acts of Solomon, and all that he did in his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the Acts of Solomon? And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David his father, and Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead. Okay, well, isn't that unfortunate? You know, the time of Solomon, the time of King Solomon, was the most prosperous time in all history, in all any time in the entire world. Uh, at any point in time in the world and because of all that and his uh basically his love for women uh and not obeying god saying you know do not join to these people because they will draw you away from god and they did they did draw solomon away from god and he started worshiping other gods i mean it is so so sad to see because you know god gave solomon such a great kingdom and a great time and great wisdom and yet he still failed in that matter. So um, it just goes to show you, even someone as great as King Solomon, even someone as great as King David, they they still failed because, you know, we're all humans. We've all sinned, Romans 3.23. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. So it's sad to see. But let's continue here in Second Chronicles 9. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to prove Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem with a very great company and camels that bear spices and golden abundance and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions, and there was nothing hid from Solomon which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon and the house that he built, 
and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, his cupbearers also, and their apparel, his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, It was a true report which I heard in mine own land of thine acts and of thy wisdom, howbeit I believed not their words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the one half of the greatness of thy wisdom was not told me, for thou exceedest the fame that I heard. Happier are the men, and happier are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighteth in thee to set thee on his throne, to be king for the Lord thy God, because thy God loved Israel, to establish them forever. Therefore made he thee king over them, to do judgment and justice. And she gave the king a hundred and twenty talents of gold, and of spices great abundance, and, and precious stones. Neither was there any such spice as the king, queen of Sheba gave king Solomon. And the servants also of Haram, and the servants of Solomon, which brought gold from Ophir, brought algum trees and precious stones. And the king made of the algum trees terraces of, to the house of the Lord, and to the king's palace, and harps and psalteries for singers. And there was none such seen before in the land of Judah. And king Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all her desire, whatsoever she asked, beside that which she had brought unto the king. So she turned and went away to her own land, and she and her servants. Now the weight of the gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred and threescore and six talents of gold. Beside that which Chapman and the merchants brought, and all the kings of Arabia and governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. And King Solomon made two hundred targets of beaten gold, six hundred shekels of beaten gold went to one target, and three hundred shields made he of beaten gold, three hundred shekels of gold went to one shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with pure gold. And there were six steps to the throne with a footstool of gold which were fastened to the throne and stays on each side of the sitting place, two lines standing by the stays. And twelve lines stood there on the one side and the other upon six steps. There was not the like made in any kingdom. And all the drinking vessels of King Solomon were of gold. The vessels of the house of the forest Lebanon were of pure gold. None of were of silver. It was not anything accounted in the days of Solomon. For the king's ships went to Tarshish with the servants of Haram. Every three years once came the ships of Tarshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. And King Solomon passed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. And all the kings there sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom that God had put in his heart. And they brought every man his present, vessels of silver and vessels of gold and raiment, harness and spices, horses and mules at rate year by year. And Solomon had four thousand stalls for horses and chariots and twelve thousand horsemen, whom he bestowed in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem. And he reigned over all the kings from the river, even unto the land of the Philistines, and to the border of Egypt. And the king made silver in Jerusalem as stones and cedar trees, he as the sycamore trees that are in the low plains in abundance. And they brought unto Solomon's horses out of Egypt and out of all lands. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon, first and last, are they not written in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the prophecy of Aijah the Shilonite, and the visions of Edo the seer against Jeroboam the son of Nebet, and Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel forty years. You know, it's interesting too, because David reigned a total of forty years too. You know, um, seven uh, were not in Jerusalem, and thirty-three were in Jerusalem. So, but a total King David reigned forty years, just like Solomon reigned forty years. Very interesting that you know all these numbers keep popping up. God is a God of numbers. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and he was buried in the city of David his father, and Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead. All right, moving on to Proverbs 30, finishing up Proverbs here. Proverbs 30 and 31. The, pro the words of Agar, the son of Jacket, even the prophecy of the man, spake unto Ithiel, even unto Ithiel and Ukal. Surely I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of man. I neither learned wisdom, nor have the knowledge of the holy, who hath ascended up into heaven, or descended, who hath gathered the wind in his fist, who hath bound the waters in a garment, who hath established the ends of the earth. What is his name, and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. What amazing, amazing verse. And thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Two things have required of thee, deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies, give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee, and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. 
Accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee, and thou be found guilty. There is a generation that curseth their father, and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords, and their jaw teeth as knives, to devour the poor from off the earth, and the needy from among men. The horse leek hath two daughters, crying, Give, give! There are three things that are never satisfied, yea, four things say not, it is enough. The grave, the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, the fire that saith not, it is enough. The eye that mocketh at his father, and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. There shall be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth, and wipeth her mouth, and saith, I have done no wickedness. For three things the earth is disquieted, and for four which it cannot bear. For a servant when he reigneth, and a fool when he is filled with meat. For an odious woman when she is married, and a handmaid that is heir to her mistress. There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in summer. The conies are but a feeble folk, yet make they their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet they go forth all of them by bands. The spider taketh hold with her hands, and is in king's palaces. There be three things which go well, yea, four are comely in going. A lion, which is strongest among beasts, and turneth not away for any. A greyhound, and he go also, and a king, against whom there is no rising up. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the ringing of the nose bringeth forth blood. So the forcing of wrath bringing forth strife. Yeah, great verses, but you know, my favorite so far is Proverbs 35, 30, verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Isn't that amazing? So quite literally, you can take this. These could be separate, but if you could also combine it. Every word of God is pure. And that means this next part is pure, which should give us hope and encouragement. He is a shield unto them that put their trust. That part of the verse is pure. That's amazing. Proverbs 31, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that is his mother taught him. What, my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows, give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law, and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine to those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Open the mouth for the dumb, and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who can find a virtuous woman? Her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so she hell, so he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Yeah, this is uh, good stuff, you know. If you have a spouse who is virtuous, um, you're you're blessed. And yeah, her price is far above rubies, meaning you can't. Uh, you can never buy something like that. That is priceless. It is just beyond blessed if you have a wife like that or husband. I guess it could work that way too. Uh, but yeah, very, very good stuff. Um, that's why you know, the Bible says uh, he who finds a wife, uh, it, it's a blessing from God, basically. Um, but, you know, marriage has lost its meaning in these days that we're living in. Uh, but marriage is a beautiful thing. God wants us to, uh, you know, to be uh, in the confines of marriage. And it's a blessing. It's a blessing. And people like to make it a negative thing, but it's not. So, continuing on. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is at night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands to hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, and all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates, and when she sitteth, he sitteth among the elders of the land. 
She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honour are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household. She eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up, and call her blessed. Her husband also he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is, in, is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Yeah. You know, I like this part. Beauty is vain? Yeah. I mean, beauty is just outside. It's what's inside that counts. I know that's like such a cliche saying. Um, you know, especially in this day, uh, day and age that we're living in, where, you know, what you look like on the outside is what matters. Right? That is so prevalent in today's society. Uh, and hardly anyone thinks about inner beauty anymore it's all about outer 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 lust uh, you know lust of the flesh uh you know our eyes what our eyes can see it's never about looking past all that and seeing the inside no it's the heart that matters beauty is vain because guess what we're all going to get old one day we're all going to lose our looks all of us not just women but men too women and men we're going to you know lose our beauty so to speak uh, and what's left when we're old and gray and uh ugly not ugly but you know what i mean um what, what's going to be left it's what's inside this is is what's going to be left right you could be the most beautiful person in the world and have a you know a not so desirable inside and no one will want to be with you uh, because that inside is just not desirable my point is beauty is vain it really is you know um yes we can appreciate beauty it's not wrong to appreciate beauty especially if your wife or your husband um, you know, uh, you feel that way about your wife or your husband and they, they make you feel that way. Um, but what's important is, do they make you feel that way inside? Are you looking at your spouse's heart first and then their outside? Their outside, um, in, in my opinion, their outside is just bonus, right? We should look at the inside first. And if you're looking at the inside and you, it makes you smile, it makes you laugh, it gives you joy just by looking at your spouse's inside um then that's what's important and if they are beautiful if you find them there's nothing wrong with finding your spouse physically attractive either i mean that's nothing wrong with that at all uh, but we can't just focus solely on that right because beauty is vain looks fade guess what doesn't um, a good character a good heart that's what matters so um, yeah, great verses all around today. Um, yeah, uh, my favorite though, I can't get past this verse here. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Yeah, a shield. I love the visuals the Bible gives about God being our strength, our shield, our buckler, our strong tower, our rock, our defense, our place of refuge. I mean, such amazing things to give us hope and encouragement. Not only this should this give us encouragement, but this first part, every word of God is pure. God is a God who cannot lie. He cannot lie, and he always keeps his promises, always, always. And that's what should give us hope. He promises something, and he will fulfill it, just like he promised. He will never leave us nor forsake us, right? Never. So, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Amen. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in him, trust in him, wait upon him, hope in him, and you'll never be sorry. And God willingly, we'll see you tomorrow with more Bible reading. So thanks again. Take care and God bless.